Arizona has an epic landscape with amazing day hikes. Most people know about the Grand Canyon, Havasupai, and the Wave, but the state has so much more to offer. We spent months traveling through Arizona. We ventured into wilderness areas and national parks so we could take on Arizona's best day hikes. We hiked more than 80 trails in Arizona, and these were our favorites. As always, make sure to properly prepare before each hike. Sturdy footwear and plenty of water are necessary for each hike on this list. Number 30, Wasson Peak. Wasson Peak sits on the west side of Tucson in Saguaro National Park. The path is rocky and unshaded, so it's hot for most of the year. It's an eight mile round trip with a couple thousand feet of elevation gain. The trail winds through Saguaro's as it climbs to the peak. Hikers will have to suffer through a couple false peaks, but the summit has beautiful views of Mount Lemmon and Tucson. Number 29, the Devil's Bridge. The Devil's Bridge is located on the north side of Sedona. This trail has gone viral in recent years, so the crowds can get crazy. The official trailhead is on Dry Creek Road, but it can only be reached with a high clearance four wheel drive vehicle. So most hikers will have to actually hike Dry Creek Road to the official trailhead. The trail through the forest is gorgeous, and the Devil's Bridge can be seen from the trail. There are scrambles along the way and spikes are necessary in the winter, but this is one of the best rock formations in Sedona. Number 28, Hualapai Peak. Hualapai Peak is located to the southeast of Kingman. This trail is a hidden gem. It starts on a dirt road but quickly moves into the forest. Its first landmark is the Potato Patch, which has large boulders and named rock formations. The trail has a seasonal campground which is a little eerie in the winter months. The final mile leading to the peak is the toughest stretch of trail, with 1,000 feet of elevation gain. The summit probably has great views, but it was cloudy during the hike, so visibility was limited. Number 27, Wildcat Trail. Monument Valley is located in Northeast Arizona, and it's one of the most well-known landmarks in Arizona. These monuments sit in the Navajo Tribal Park and they attract visitors from across the globe. Most hikes in Monument Valley are accessed through paid, guided tours, but not this trail. The Wildcat Trail is four miles long and it's relatively flat, but it gives visitors the unique opportunity to hike around Monument Valley's iconic buttes. Number 26, Piastua Peak. This trail sits in the heart of Phoenix, and it's a rite of passage for most hikers in the area. The trail climbs 1,200 feet over a single mile. The path is well kept with steps and a few small scrambles. There are great views along the way and at the peak, but this one is all about the workout. Number 25, Spencer Trail. The Spencer Trail makes its home at Lee's Ferry in Northern Arizona. This is a four mile trail with 1,700 feet of elevation gain. Also, the trail has no shade, so it can get hot quick. The path is rocky, as it curls around the cliffs above the Colorado River. But the final lookout made the climb worth it, as we sat atop the rock and looked out over Lee's Ferry. Number 24, the Woodforce Trail. This trail is located on the north rim of the Grand Canyon. The trail passes through Kaibab Forest while it walks along Transept Canyon with spectacular views. Fall colors also add quite a bit to this trail. The trail culminates at Woodforce Point, which provides a unique view that isn't available anywhere else on the North Rim. An out and back hike will cover a little over nine miles with a thousand feet of elevation gain. Number 23, White Pocket. White Pocket is located in Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. This trail is more about the landscape than the actual hike. The roads at Vermilion Cliffs are not well kept. These roads consist of uneven rocky terrain, ruts, and deep soft sand, so hikers will need four-wheel drive and high clearance to access the trailhead. But this also helps to keep the crowds down, which is nice. The hike is only 1.2 miles long, but it can be more or less depending on how much you explore. The landscape is covered in patterns, colors, and incredible rock formations. This is one of Northern Arizona's most underrated areas. Number 22, Soldier Pass. Soldier Pass is located just north of Sedona, and it's one of Sedona's most popular trails. This trail has several landmarks, including the Seven Sacred Pools, the Devil's Kitchen, 
and the Soldier Pass Arch. The trail is four and a half miles out and back, and it's pretty straightforward, but it can be tough to access due to Sedona's shuttle system. Due to large increases in tourism, Sedona had to shut down some trailheads and begin shuttling hikers in and out. Certain trailheads are open on certain days of the week, and details can be found at SedonaShuttle.com. Number 21, Arch Canyon Trail. Deep in southern Arizona, just north of the Mexican border, sits Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. This monument offers a haven to the Oregon Pipe Cactus, but it also provides some great hiking options, including the Arch Canyon Trail. This three-mile trail leads up a rocky path to an arch that sits above the canyon. The path wasn't always easy to follow, and it was tough to find a route to the arch, but this was a great spot for a beautiful Sonoran sunset. Before we get to the top 20, this is a quick reminder that Arizona travel guides are now available at SojournExpedition.com. These guides contain detailed information about hikes, landmarks, overlooks, restaurants, and attractions from each location, including the Havasupai Reservation, the Grand Canyon, and Northern Arizona. Visit SojournExpedition.com to check out all of our travel guides. Now back to the hikes. Number 20, Cathedral Wash. Cathedral Wash is located to the west of Page, Arizona, in Lee's Ferry. This trail follows a mostly dry wash deep into a limestone canyon. Rock formations decorate the edge of the canyon and changing sunlight can create beautiful scenes. The entire trail is only three and a half miles out and back, but the path has a lot of climbing and scrambling, so it takes longer than a normal three and a half miles. The end of the trail has a beautiful view of the Colorado River as it passes through Glen Canyon. Number 19, Boynton Canyon. Many of Sedona's trails are centered around rock formations like the Devil's Bridge and Bell Rock, but this hike winds through Boynton Canyon with beautiful scenery alongside the trail. Also, we did this hike in the winter, which added to the trail's beauty, but we also needed spikes. While the canyon is beautiful and we recommend hiking to the end of it, most people take a right a mile into the trail and head to Keyhole Cave, which is one of Sedona's most popular landmarks. Number 18, Coyote Butte South. Coyote Butte South is another treasure located in Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. This is a special wilderness management area and visitors will have to win a lottery to hike here. Once hikers reach Coyote Butte South, they're rewarded with beautiful views of an incredibly unique landscape. The area has sandstone waves, jagged buttes, unique formations, and even a few bighorn sheep. Just like White Pocket, it takes a high clearance four-wheel drive vehicle to reach the trailhead. Number 17, Pass Mountain Summit. Usury Mountain Regional Park sits on the east side of Phoenix. Its most popular trail is the Wind Cave Trail, but hikers can pass the Wind Cave and continue to the Pass Mountain Summit. This path leads across a small, rocky ridge which leads to the peak. We found ourselves scaling rocks and scrambling over cliffs. This trail felt epic, and it was a great hike. In our opinion, it's the most underrated hike in the Phoenix area. Number 16, Browns Peak via Browns Trail. Four Peaks sits to the east of Phoenix, with Browns Peak being the most prominent of the four peaks. The trail can be difficult to access. Accessing it from the west requires four-wheel drive and high clearance, and accessing it from the east requires a 45-minute drive down an unmaintained dirt road. The hike is relatively straightforward. It's only five miles long with 1,900 feet of elevation gain. But the approach to the peak requires hikers to traverse the Scree Chute. This chute, while fun, makes the peak inaccessible without climbing equipment in the winter months. Trust us on that. Number 15, West Fork. To the north of Sedona in Oak Creek Canyon sits the West Fork of the Oak Creek. This is a beautiful seven mile trail that winds through Sedona's wilderness with incredible red rock cliffs towering over the trail. The path follows Oak Creek and passes through the creek over 20 times. Be ready to get wet on this trail, 
And if you go in the spring, like us, water levels will be higher and colder because of the melting snow. Number 14, Picacho Peak. Picacho Peak State Park is in between Phoenix and Tucson. The peak itself stands 1,400 feet above the surrounding landscape. But the trail has almost 2,200 feet of elevation gain. We hiked up to the saddle only to watch the trail descend 400 feet before making the final approach to the peak. The trail leaves hikers exposed to the cliffs, plus it has scaffolding and ladders along the way. But this trail makes for a great adventure. Number 13, the Devil's Playground. Petrified Forest National Park is just off I-40 in Northeast Arizona. The park is known for its history and petrified wood. But deep in the Petrified Forest Wilderness Area sits the Devil's Playground, which is one of Arizona's most unique trails. The trail passed colored badlands and beautiful rock formations while we walked through the clay and mud. This is a permitted hike and permits can be difficult to get, but we outline the process in our Petrified Forest Travel Guide. So for more information, check that out. Number 12. Fremont Saddle via Peralta Canyon Trail. East of Phoenix in the Superstition Mountains sits Peralta Canyon. Hikers can take the trail two and a half miles to Fremont Saddle to get an incredible view of the most popular landmark in the Superstitions, Weaver's Needle. You can even go past the saddle and climb the needle with the proper equipment. But for us, Fremont Saddle was a perfect stopping point. Number 11, North Kaibab. The North Kaibab Trailhead sits on the Grand Canyon's North Rim. This hike is gorgeous. The trail has several sections which provide some of the best views in the Grand Canyon. North Kaibab is 14 miles long one way and it stretches all the way to the Phantom Ranch. This trail is known for epic backpacking trips, but as a day hike it can be a little rough. For day hikes, rangers suggest visitors turn back at Roaring Springs. This is an eight and a half mile round trip, but the elevation gain on the way out is 3,500 feet, so the trip out is brutal. Number 10, Seven Falls. This trail is on the north side of Tucson, in Sabino Canyon Recreation Area, and it's Tucson's most popular trail. The Seven Falls via Bear Creek Trail is seven miles long, with less than a thousand feet of elevation gain but it has several water crossings, and some of these water crossings are deep, so be ready to get wet on this one. The trail ends with a beautiful view of Seven Falls and a popular swimming hole. Number 9, the Bob Bear Trail. The Bob Bear Trail sits between Payson and Flagstaff in the Tonto National Forest. This is a nine mile trail that descends down to Fossil Creek. Fossil Creek provides a great place to take a dip, but most hikers opt to take the trail another half mile to Fossil Creek Falls and the Toilet Bowl. The trail is popular in spring and summer, so the Forest Service requires permits from April 1st to October 1st. Number 8. Humphreys Peak. Humphreys Peak sits to the north of Flagstaff, and it's Arizona's highest peak. This hike is a brutal climb with almost 3,500 feet of elevation gain. The trail winds through Coconino National Forest and enters the Kachina Peaks Wilderness. The path is covered in ponderosa pines until the saddle. From there, it's a rocky, unshaded path to Humphrey. The trail is marked with wooden posts, but it still disappears from time to time. And there are two false peaks. But the views from the top are well worth the price of admission. Number 7. Cathedral Rock. Sedona has several incredible trails, but Cathedral Rock is the best. It's a short trail with only a mile and a half round trip, but it's fun, and the views are spectacular. We passed a couple streams and scrambled up rocks to reach the top. Then we enjoyed a beautiful sunset. It's not the easiest trail, but it's well worth the effort. Also, keep in mind the trailhead has limited hours and access. So check out SedonaShuttle.com for details about getting to the trailhead. Number 6. Coyote Buttes North. Coyote Buttes North sits in northern Arizona, and it's part of Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. In recent years, the location has become popular, and permits are required to access the area. 
The popularity comes from its main attraction, the wave. This colorful patch of Navajo sandstone attracts hikers from across the planet. The wave itself makes up less than one-tenth of a mile, and the three-mile path leading to it is relatively uneventful. Still, the wave's popularity persists, and this permit has become the toughest permit to acquire in Arizona. For more details about the wave, the permit process, and other landmarks along the way, check out our video guide to Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. Number 5. The Flatiron Lost Dutchman State Park sits to the east of Phoenix, and it's home to the Siphon Draw Trail. This trail leads hikers into the Superstition Mountains Wilderness, and its first landmark, the Flatiron. This trail is rough. The entire trail is just under 6 miles long, but it has 2,700 feet of elevation gain, 2,000 of which come just before reaching the Flatiron. Hikers will have to be careful and watch their footing, but reaching the top feels like an accomplishment. Number 4, South Kaibab. This is another iconic trail in Grand Canyon National Park. South Kaibab starts on the south rim and descends 4,500 feet down into the canyon. This trail has landmarks like Ua Point and Cedar Ridge, but it doesn't have water, so hikers beware. Bighorn sheep make their home in this part of the canyon, and hikers might even see the park's famous pack mules taking supplies to the Phantom Ranch. The trail winds seven miles down to the canyon floor and the Black Bridge of the Colorado River. While it's possible to do South Kaibab as a day hike, most visitors will want to stop at Cedar Ridge unless they have overnight reservations in the canyon. Number 3. Heart of Rocks Loop Chiricahua National Monument is located in the southeast corner of Arizona. This monument is remote, and many people don't take the time to visit. But the park has one of the best trails in Arizona, the Heart of Rocks Loop. The loop itself is only one mile long and it can be accessed from Echo Canyon or the Visitor Center, each trail being around six miles. The final loop provides an incredible reward for hikers as it boasts some of the best rock formations in Arizona. Personally, I love this trail. Its hoodoo formations were beautiful and it's one of the most underrated trails in the state. Number 2. Mooney Falls to Beaver Falls This one comes with a catch. In order to do this hike, you have to be staying on the Havasupai Reservation. But once you're there, this trail serves as the best day hike on the reservation. We started early and made the descent down to Mooney. This part of the trail was treacherous. Once we reached the bottom, we had an epic view of Mooney. Then we headed to Beaver Falls. The trail passes through the Havasu Valley which is the most beautiful stretch of trail on the reservation. After two and a half miles of water crossings, scrambles, and small climbs, we made it to Beaver Falls. This is Havasupai's toughest waterfall to access, but it's gorgeous. Number one, the Bright Angel Trail. Topping our list is one of the National Park System's most iconic trails, the Bright Angel Trail. This trail stretches from the South Rim all the way to the Colorado River. The trail has incredible views with epic scenery, but it is a workout. Going from the top to the bottom in a single day isn't always safe, so most hikers shouldn't go past Havasupai Gardens. And even that is rough. Plan ahead, work within your fitness level, and be safe. This trail, along with South Kaibab, is best enjoyed as a single day hike with an overnight stay at the bottom. For us, that meant hiking down South Kaibab, staying at the Phantom Ranch, then hiking up Bright Angel the next day. Staying overnight let us explore the canyon without feeling rushed along the way. For more details about our Phantom Ranch stay, check out our Phantom Ranch video.